What happens when a group of kids looking to find relief from the heat in the middle of summer find a basement and themselves in the middle of a paranormal meltdown? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. And it is 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Of course, you can uh, write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you want all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, uh, all commercial free, you get our ebook, our audio book, uh, and quite literally access to the largest archive of recorded ghost stories in history. Largest audio archive of ghost stories uh, ever made. You can get it uh, at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Five dollars a month gets you access to all of that. And that goes a long ways to keeping this program on the air. Tony and Carol with you on today's episode. And what's going on in your world today, Carol? Well, Tony, um, you know, it's kind of the same old shit. Ah, yes. You know, um, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I got my dog to eat today. That was big. Hey. (laughs) I swear. Anymore, it's just the little things. It's like, yay, my dog ate. I videoed it. I was so excited. Look at my dog is eating food, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) It's when they hit 15. It's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, well, they uh, they got to eat, and when they're refusing, it, it's like one of the worst feelings because it's like, won't you just eat? Just take I know. a bite. And they just kind of look at you, and then they walk away. And everybody has, of course then, stupid me, I go to Facebook, and I'm like, hey, you know, is it okay just to give my dog cat food? I didn't mean like I'm giving my dog bowls of cat food. He mm-hmm. gets like a little, little, little bit. And there's nothing wrong with it, by the way. I don't, at least and, um, I don't think so. Well, now a veterinarian did chime in and she said, you know, at 15, you know, he's already a Whatever. part of time. Yeah. Yeah. But like, oh my God, then I have so many people giving me opinions and like, have you tried this? Have you tried this? I'm like, man, I've tried everything. You think I haven't tried all that shit? <laughs> yes. Except somebody says, have you tried tuna? I'm like, no, but it sure does sound a lot like cat food. And so I went and got tuna and he actually ate that. I was just thinking tonight, I think they should change the flavors of dog food and make it however consistency needed of the dog food, but change your flavorings up to the cat food flavors because my, right? my dogs love cat food. I have to constantly, uh, in, in my barn, uh, again, is another sentence that I need like a, some, a bell for that sentences. You never thought Tony would ever say, <laughs> uh, in my barn, my barn cats ding, uh, and my two barn dogs that live down there ding. ding. There we go. Um, they, uh, I, I put, I have two bowls, and I put one bowl of the cat food, and I try and get it up way high on one of the uh, the big things of hay, ding, uh, and so the dogs can't get at it. But they're like, you know, trapeze artists or something. They can climb shit and oh, gosh, get, get to yeah. places I didn't think they could. Um, so it's hard to keep them away from it. But and I'll pour them a giant bowl of dog food because they're giant dogs. And uh, they're great Pyrenees. And uh, it's like, here you go, guys. Big thing of it. You know, food mountain. And then they see that little bowl of cat food. And that's all they want to get to. That's what we want. Is that little thing of cat food up there for the barn cats. It's like, this is like one fourth of the size of what I just poured you. And they'll spend like an hour trying to get to the cat food. And their dog food just sits. And it's funny. That's what they should flavor senior dog food. Yeah, Because, you know, when a dog does get old and hates everything, it's like. Give me the cat flavored dog food. Yeah. That's a brilliant idea. That would, I mean, people would get it right away too. They're like, oh God, yeah. Just just put a dog food brand out there and it's just cat flavored dog food. That's all it is. And it's not like it's cat flavored like it tastes like cats. It's, <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> but cat food flavor. Cat food dog flavor food. dog food. Yeah. 
You're like, oh my God, it tastes like cats. Yeah. But um, I, yeah, I think it'd be a great marketing move. And people are like, I get it. That's perfect. So anyway. Uh, Man, if somebody does that like right away, let me know. <laughs> Because we're going to go after you uh, financially for stealing no, the I, idea. No, I just want to give some to we, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to, Carol's going to get some for her dog, and then we're going to get like 40% you can of your sue profits. Him, Tony. I have got so much shit going on in my life right now. If you've got time to sue him, because I right just copyrighted the idea. Is it? It's something when you say it out loud and publish it, it's like, it's, co- I don't know what it is. It's something where it's like marked and I don't know. Uh, it probably means nothing at all. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's uh, go to our first letter. It says, hey, Tony, Carol, Harper, and Todd. My name is Patrick, and I was quite thrilled to have heard my story in a recent Child Safe episode with Harper. It was a dual story and included a post office and my grandmother's house. Thank you, Tony, for the insight regarding my grandfather. To the point of this story, it is the one I had referred to the year was 1999. I was nine years old at the time, and the craze was the impending end of the world due to Y2K. Being nine, I did not much care about the end of the world, as the incident of my parents' divorce two years prior was, and I then believed to be the end of my world. During August of this year, I was often at my next-door neighbor's as she was my babysitter. Her son, who was only two years younger than me, who I considered a good friend, and I'd have a generally good time playing board games in the basement or more inventive games outside if the weather was exactly right. My friend had a younger sister who was four years younger than himself, and she tried to involve herself in these games. I'll use the initials of M for babysitter, C for friend, and J, little sister. From now on. One of these August days was just far too hot to be outside and Jay was asleep. So we could not be upstairs or on the main floor as C and I would make far too much noise and wake Jay from her much needed nap. We were therefore placed in the basement. Their basement, as I remember it now, was partially finished and the portion that was not finished was the laundry and storage area behind a closed door. They had carpeted floors, but the carpet was more noticeably short gray and uncomfortable style, but served its purpose of covering the concrete. There was a small closet where they kept old board games, but we decided that neither of us was in the mood for any of those. The best part of the basement was the TV area. There were two couches, one larger than the other by full cushion width. They were a blue gray plaid uh, pattern fabric covered design. They decided to build some simple pillow forts from the couch cushions and pillows had begun to watch some TV. We spent about an hour and a half laughing and talking through cartoons, as children often do. M came to the top of the stairs and told us to expect Jay to come downstairs soon and that we were to play nice with her. We did not want to. C and I then decided to make it so Jay would not want to come downstairs at all. On previous occasions, we would simply turn off the lights and watch TV in the dark on the couches, but decided it was not going to be enough. No light was our plan, not a speck. Not a stream, not one single particle of light was to show from the basement when she would open the door. So we blocked the VCR lights with Disney movies, turned off the TV, and used another VCR box to block the little red light in the front. When all was said and done, I stayed in my fort on the smaller of the two couches as it faced the side of the stairs and had a longer view of the basement. C went up to the stairs, checked the kitchen for M to make sure she was not there. And quietly closing the door to the basement, we decided to close our eyes for what we believed to be enough time to reset our eyes for the darkness of the basement, roughly 20 to 30 seconds. C turned off the lights. We began counting before opening our eyes. When we had, C was still at the top of the stairs and had a wall between himself and me for maybe two or three stairs distance. As I opened my eyes from hearing him walk, I saw before me in front of the TV stand a mass of what I can only describe as white light. Though not a pure white light, more of a blue white. What caused me concern was that though its composition was that of light, it gave none to space it inhabited. It was shapeless, just a constant blur, and did not reflect in the face of the glass TV screen. I said, do you see that? And C said, yes. No further conversation had. We watched as this massive light began to come into focus. From my perspective, it began to take the shape of a young, mid to late teens girl. Her hair was behind her in braids that ended in what looked like small stones. Her clothing took the shape of what I would suspect to be deerskin. 
As the remainder of her body took form, I noticed her legs were tucked under her as though she was sitting on her knees with her feet behind her. We watched as she began to bend forward at her wrist and rise back up. She did this three to four times in the span of 30 seconds. I could not see her face as I was positioned on the couch behind her. I never get the chance either, for as she began to turn her head, the door to the basement flew open. The lights came on and M was shouting at us, asking what we were thinking. Turning off all the lights, C had not moved from the fifth stair down, and which seemed like several minutes was contained with only one. We were heavily scolded for trying to be mean to Jay. We were made to clean up the basement and then went outside because M had set up a blow-up pool and sprinkler for us to beat the heat. This is what we did with the rest of the day. We played in the light and cold, refreshing water. I had asked C several times after this if he could recount what the girl's face looked like, and every time he said he could not. We'd attempted to replicate the event several times to no avail. Five years later, the family would move, and we lost contact. But I never forgot the form of that girl, the young Native American girl in the basement. Thank you for reading my story. I'm in no way sorry for its length and will write it soon about my last encounter so far with the paranormal. Love the show. Patrick from Illinois. I like that, Patrick, at the end. He's in no way sorry for the length because so many people <laughs> apologize. It's like, no, it's fine. We like long stories. That's Don't what, ever be sorry for that. No, the longer well, the story, the better. But when it's well told, you know, mm -hmm. if it's rambling and you sure. get off track and that stuff. But that was yeah. a good story. Yes. Yes, 100%. Keep sharing, keep sharing those kinds of stories. Thoughts on his uh, situation? You know, I, I think totally, you know, I don't have a lot to add to that, but I totally think they saw, you know, I think it's interesting that, you, that well, then the one guy couldn't remember what it looked like, but mm -hmm. then he just described it. But, um... Yeah, I, to I totally think that's what happened. It's interesting because it's almost the opposite of a shadow person. It's mm -hmm. a glowing person. You don't hear about, I don't think, I don't know that we've ever really had that before. I mean, maybe if someone was talking about um, an angel or something, but. You know, when I was <clears throat> little in that haunted house that we lived in, now I never saw it. There was just rumors in it. My, you know how urban, well, in a really little town, um, urban stories go around sure. those, you know, that kind of people just tell the same story. But there was across the street, we lived on a lake and people said they had seen a glowing woman. So I think that's a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the glow, which I think is kind of, that would freak me out. It's all, it's usually in the distance. So like that, it's rare that it's True. like, like right True. in front of you, like two or three feet. But I guess they would, you know, but if you were that close to the glowing woman, that you're seeing off in the distance, she probably would be that blindingly bright. And would it be that much of a stretch that you could be in the form of a shadow person or a kind of a see-through person <laughs> or a glowing person? Yeah. And is there a rank? Like, is there like the glowing people are farther advanced in the spirit world? I don't think there's any, any more of a rank in that sort of thing than there is when somebody's saying that, that this person is different than that person because one of them's tired and one of them is wide awake. I think it has everything to do with the energy that the ghost or the spirit is able to muster up at the time. And in some ways, that'll be appearing as a shadow. In some ways, it'll be appearing clear as day. In some ways, it'll be appearing almost glowing. Um, in, in some ways, it'll be appearing just very, you know, misty. I think it's all to do with the energy that it is currently able to get whatever it's hitting our atmosphere or our world, um, whatever it's hitting it with, uh, that is what it has to do. And I think they probably are constantly in flux, just like we're constantly in flux with, do we have energy right now? Are we tired? Are we awake? Are we, you know, all of that. I think that's what it's all about. That makes sense. So it's not a, like a rank or a type of ghost or this or that. I think it's, it's just how that comes across. And I think it can be all different types of ghosts too. But that's that's my interpretation. So do you think like what they saw a glowing person mm -hmm. that somebody else or they could have seen that same entity spirit later and it might be in a different form? 
Yeah, I could think I could not I don't necessarily think a different physical form if it was a human ghost, but it could be in a different right, form. Right, but of, I mean more shadowy, yeah, less yes. distinct, you know. It it could have been in a place where it was somehow getting enough energy to glow, and I think there's times where it's kind of running on my guess would be running on low. And it has mustering up, you know, a little bit of energy and you're seeing the shadow of it. But I think it can also sometimes put too much into it to be visible. And I think that might be where you get the glow. Uh, that's my weird guessing on how ghosts show themselves. Man, and that'd be awesome if you're a ghost and it's like, yes, I'm glowing. Yeah. You know, it's like if only there is another spirit around a high five because this is awesome. It's almost like, you know, when, when you're riding a bike and you're, you're if you're if you're trying to maintain a constant steady speed, period, you don't want to go too high and you don't want to go too low. You're trying to sit hit it, you know, 20 miles an hour. And then it's like, oh, sometimes you're going a little bit more than that. And then sometimes you're going a bit less than that. And then sometimes you're right at 20. And if that's where you want to be as a spirit, I think that might be the area where you may come across more so as those ghosts that are just completely visible to the public and they people don't realize it's a ghost. But they're like, he was standing right there and then he was gone. I think that's like they might be hitting that peak energy that they're trying to expel oh, to be seen. But it's hard. Sweet spot. Yeah, but it's hard to keep it there. I could, that would be my guess, that it's hard to kind of maintain this level of whatever it is to to be seen the way that we would see them. And so sometimes it might be you're pushing more into it. You're not pushing enough. You're pushing just perfect. It all really kind of depends. That I have no idea. I base this on nothing other than my guess. You um, know what, though? It sounded awesome. And I'm kind of I think you might have some made some good points. I figure there's a there's a struggle on the other side if you're a conscious entity to to be seen or to do something. It's not just like flip a switch. OK, you can all see me now. I think that there's probably something, some work being done that I don't know. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Next letter says almost three years ago now, I was dating a guy that had anger issues. He took medication for it, but sometimes He'd run out before he could refill it or would just forget to. We were together for a year and engaged soon to be getting married. We we're moving into a duplex in a little livestock or uh, uh, love sick area after moving from an apartment that had recently gone up in rent we could no longer afford. Our first night moving into the duplex was Halloween. We started moving all our stuff in and was getting things unpacked. He worked early morning shifts at his job, usually about four in the morning, and I worked afternoons at my job. But maybe a week after moving in, I started to have sleep paralysis. I'd never had sleep paralysis until we moved into the duplex. The first sleep paralysis episode I had was when we had our air mattress right next to the bedroom door. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs and thought maybe he forgot something since he would do that a lot and come back to get what he forgot. The footsteps got to the door. The door started opening, but no one was there. I tried getting up and could not move whatsoever. I'm lying there and suddenly I could feel a force on top of my chest. I could literally feel it forcing me down and I'm fighting to wake myself up, which I was finally able to do. I told the guy I was with what happened and he kind of brushed it off as a bad dream. I had moving into a new place. About a week or so after that, I had the same thing happen. Footsteps are coming up the stairs and our bedroom door opening while I'm trying to wake up, but I could feel that same heavy force pushing on top of me and nothing being there at all. And I told the guy and he did not say anything, probably just thinking I had a bad dream. After that episode, I decided to move the air mattress away from the door against another one of the walls. Another few weeks passed by and the same thing would happen. Footsteps, door opening, but this time I could fight a little to move. But still, I could feel the force pushing me down and it got heavier. I wake myself up screaming. Each time this force gets heavier on my chest and I'm sharing my experience with this guy and he's brushing off each time. And I started sharing my stories with a few co-workers and they felt more concerned for my safety. I tell them how I'm staying and starting to get scared every time I'm alone in that duplex sleeping. Then one co-worker had even more concern asking questions about if I was being abused. Even though I was not physically abused, I felt emotionally abused. And as I mentioned before, he had anger issues. So when off his meds for a few days, his anger got bad. I had a few more episodes of the same thing. But each time I was able to move myself a little more, 
But the last sleep paralysis I had is what made me not want to be living in the duplex and being in the relationship anymore. The only difference one of this one was I could force myself to roll out of bed to try to hide before the bedroom door could open. I'm moving more in the dream. I'm able to dial 911. I could hear the operator, but I could not talk. I'm trying to scream and nothing comes out. I hear the loud door open and I could hear a faint noise of rattling, kind of like a belt being undone and a voice asking, hello. I finally woke up, but I was terrified and woke up screaming and crying. I was so uncomfortable with this going on. I told my coworkers and they said, they think I need to leave the place and leave him because something bad might be about to happen. And I could feel it too. They were concerned he could even kill me or something malicious could be attaching itself to me. I was so unsure what this force of being was. Whether malicious or something trying to warn me, it made me wake up my mind. I needed to get away from this before something really did happen. After I left the relationship and the place, I have never had sleep paralysis again, even to this day. Interesting story. That is really interesting. Yeah. It almost makes me think, yes, sleep paralysis but was she getting, like, if you're with someone like that, you know, you're kind of tiptoeing. It's sort of eggshells every day. Yep. And it's a negative energy to be around. Mm -hmm. And at night, it just kind of manifested into a sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. And you're, the way you do you're doing that is a little spooky. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it's just interesting. And then that last dream, don't go, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, <laughs> that last dream where she's calling 911, that's what sealed the deal for me. Because I'm like, get out of there. It's bad. I would have been one of those friends saying, this is bad, bad, bad. Well, it might have just even been the subconscious, just kind of knowing, you know, yeah. putting the pieces together. I mean, you you have someone with anger issues who doesn't maintain the medication. You have someone who can be mentally abusive. Uh, and you're just kind of sitting there like a sitting duck waiting for that one to explode. When you add all of that together, anyone, I mean, it's easy on the outside to go, let's see here, you know, one plus one equals two, uh, in, you know, this is, here's the recipe. This is what the, the equation will eventually mean when someone presses equal, uh, and you're just kind of waiting for someone to press equal. And, and that's, you know, I, I think, you know, she was on the cusp of it and was trying to get out. It could be something where it was a forewarning and it was, I was almost waiting for her to be like, and I woke up and then it was the, he was that, choking me or the dream was starting again, but it was, it wasn't the dream this time. It was the real deal. Yeah. And that was her sign. Oh my God, I got to go out the window or something. Um, but Thank I got it. wouldn't happen like that. Whatever it was, uh, subconscious, some sort of sign, um, you know, I, I think, you know, her body was sensing the, the negativity, the, the maliciousness and, and the sadness that, that someone is feeling, um, you know, when they're suffering with those things, but also the potential of what it could do to her. And, and she made the right call. And she said that he hadn't physically abused her, but she'd yeah. been abused. Yeah. You know, and living like that's no way to live. No, no. And, you know, sometimes you, you know in your heart or there's that voice in your head, you know it's not right, but especially in a relationship, sometimes it's just too hard to get out of it. He's mm -hmm. going to change, all that bullshit. But maybe that was going on in her head at night, like her subconscious just took over and was like, this is really serious and you need to get out because you're not listening to the little voice in your head. Yeah, We will make this very obvious to you. I think a lot of times our dreams are the little voice in the head, like uh, going to uh, going to Broadway. <laughs> it's like, right. all right, you don't get this shit. Okay, now we're gonna put on a show for you, and it's not Five, gonna make sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if, if you just dreamed in Broadway, uh, like musicals? <laughs> like oh my god, every... <laughs> I would love it. I'd be asleep right now if that was the case. <laughs> I'd wake up every day like, hello. <laughs> Oh my God, that would be horrible! <laughs> like, stop awesome. the music. And you're stuck like in damn Yankees or something. That would suck. <laughs> it's just cats oh forever. God, I dreamed in damn. Yankees. I dreamed in yeah, damn Yankees or cats, and that's obviously I hate damn Yankees. <laughs> cats is brilliant compared to damn Yankees. <laughs>
There you go. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Let's go to caller. Hi, you are on the air. Hi, my name is Brittany. I live in Derby, Kansas, and I actually did call you with a, um, I guess, ghost story, if you will. Um, I do have um, a couple others. Uh, Me and my husband moved into a new house uh, back in 2014 before we were married. Um, Our wedding was the next year. Um, And I remember going to see this house, and I... It was a decent house, you know, it was updated. Um, It was an old house, I think uh, 1956 was when it was um, built, which is old for me. Um, Anyways, it was a nice house, you know, cute, uh, upstairs, downstairs. I just had this weird feeling every time we would go see it before we moved in. Um, Something just didn't seem right. Um, we bypassed that and moved in and, you know, everything was good and happy and we had our son a year later. Um, my sister would come over and babysit him while I went to work. She said she could always feel like something was watching her. Um, and I told her the same. I said, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, my husband, you know, was iffy. He believes in ghosts. Um, but he, I think, was just trying not to scare me. But I do remember the first night sleeping in this house. I stayed up all night for a week, give or take. I could not sleep. Something just felt terribly wrong. Um, I was scared. I would call my husband because he was at work, and I would be like, you know, something just goes right. I cannot sleep. And so then I started hearing, like, there was a TV on. So I would go back in my son's room no TV was on. He was asleep. It sounded like it was coming downstairs. And at the time we didn't have a TV downstairs. Um, but it almost looked like somebody was living downstairs kind of sound TV. Um, anyways, fast forward. My son had this remote control car and we were sitting in the living room one time. We were just kind of having a date night. Kids weren't with us. The remote control car starts going off. And so I said, Oh my God, did you notice that? And he said, yeah. You're like, well, I mean, the controller's on, you know, remote control cars can do their, do their stuff. So we took the batteries out of the controller and the car kept moving and I recorded it. Um, I don't think I have the video anymore, but it went all the way across the living room. Um, and I believe that the car was off. Um, so that freaked us out. Um, So that, the TV being on, one time my son was in his room um, asleep, and I heard, or actually my husband and I heard, ho, 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 Merry Christmas, in a man's voice. And so I was like, did you just hear that? He said, yeah. So we go into Tyson's room, my son, and he was dead asleep, no TV was on, and it legit sounded like it was coming just straight from that room. One day, my husband um, had just gotten home from work, picked up our son. He was using the restroom, and my son um, was in his room. And my husband heard, we had this big, long hallway. Um, My husband heard somebody running back and forth really hard, like stomping, running. And um, so Aaron gets done, goes into our son's room, and was like, hey, Ty, did you need something? And he's like, were you trying to get a snack? And Ty said, no, I wasn't doing anything. And Aaron walked back down the hallway to go into the living room, and he looked down, and there was a big um, imprint of a big, uh, like, work boot, I would say, in the carpet. Um, And he sent me a picture of it, and it just absolutely freaked us out. Um, so after that, actually, a bunch of things started to happen um, with the family. You know, things were going wrong. We weren't happy. It just felt like we were under a big black cloud in that house. And um, since then, we have moved. We've been out of that house for two years now. We're in our new house, and it, everything just seems so much better. 
And we're like two blocks away from our old house, and we'll drive by, and we just absolutely hate driving by. We hate looking at the house. It just feels so eerie. Um, And we pray that the family that's in there now doesn't um, experience what we experienced. She's right in your neck of the woods. She's just down the street. Yeah. Well, not just down the street. Well, there's a lot of... She's like probably 10 miles away from where I'm at. There's a lot of streets in Wichita. Right? Yeah. I, the people um, in the Derby is right by Wichita because she said she was in Derby, but yeah. Yeah, it's all connected. Yep. Um, but part of me wants to know where that house is and then part of me doesn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go drive by. But I tell you, nothing ruins a date night more than the remote control car that won't stop. <laughs> that would freak me out. It's like the batteries are out of it. Why is it still moving? <laughs> Would that make you leave a date? Would that be like I'm I'm out. I'm good. If I like yeah, if I was at his house and that shit was going down, I'd be like we can't date. <laughs> would you would you going to break up with you? Would you do that where you end the whole relationship or would you just be like the date for the evening is over, but we can hang well, out somewhere else next time? It would all depend. Okay. I mean, if I didn't really like him, yeah, I would just end it right there. <laughs> Too yeah. much drama. <laughs> Yeah, paranormal shit surrounding your ass. I'm way too old for this. Yeah. Like, I just want a simple, nice relationship, and you live in a haunted house. Um, <laughs> I don't know, because I just don't like that stuff. Yeah. So, But if I really liked him, I would be like, you can come to my house. Yeah. So there's that. But they had a lot of activity in that house. And they did. how weird here. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. It's a festive ghost, you know? Right? It's kind of interesting because it wasn't like, oh, my God, what if it was Santa? Because they saw an imprint of a big work boot, Mm -hmm. Santa. The toys are operating on their own, Mm -hmm. Santa. TVs are on. Well, Santa could be watching TV. Well, was this literally (laughs) our first? Is this the first encounter story of a Santa? Where it's, you know, maybe we have a new cryptid here where it's, it's not just... Uh, you know, Bigfoots and all this, there are now legitimate Santa sightings where this sort of stuff happens. Well, you know, there's those men who play Santa and are totally into it. Yes, like, they're it's called kind criminals. Of who they are. Like, <laughs> I know guys who like have I know. The beard year round. And yeah. like, there's one guy he dresses like in red only year oh my round. God. So when he walks into, you know, the your favorite Mexican restaurant, everybody's like, Santa. I, He's like, oh. You you do know that Branson is the like capital of that. Like they have the the worldwide Santa convention there every year, uh, and it has to be so judgy. Oh like, my god! But the thing is, seriously, many, each Santa would be like, "You're not that good. I'm good." A lot You're of them okay. live there though too. So year round. When when Harper was little, it was kind of great because you could go to like Panera and there's a Santa over and the, there's Santa. He's having a panini. You know, <laughs> let's not bother him. He's he's making a list and checking it twice. Oh, he's going to take food to go for that. Is house. he looking at a fucking penthouse? Oh, my God. <laughs> Santa. Pat but Santa. A guy, a guy like that, yeah. when he dies, like he could haunt a house. Mm-hmm. So it's really not the real Santa. I, I Maybe think, that's who lived there. And you know what? I think that's kind of cool, and I would not be remotely surprised because some of these people get so into it, and there's plenty. I was joking. They're not criminals. There, maybe some are, but I, I think a lot of them are just genuinely nice people that right. they just like kids, and this is their way of you know spending retirement and just giving back and, and being positive. There's nothing wrong with that. So I could totally see uh, somebody, if that's your thing, and you just found so much joy in your, your later years that with you when you die, you're like, I'm going to keep doing this shit. <laughs> Guess what? I'm Santa. I live here now. <laughs> and because that's what you do. Part of your identity. I yeah. mean, why couldn't it? Exactly. Be? I don't know. We might be onto something there or not. Well, Harper's already but... trying to figure out how I'm going to still co host the show with her when I die someday. So she's like, by that time, Dad, we're probably going to have good enough technology. You can communicate through like radio or something. And I'll press all the buttons and do the show. But you can still be you can be the co-host then and you'll be dead and we'll be the first podcast with a dead co-host. It's like, honey, this is turning into some weird Alfred <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock sort of <laughs> themed podcast. We have like a weird reverse Bates Motel thing going on. <laughs> it's like 
I would really prefer that you grow up and get married and maybe your husband can do the podcast with you once I'm gone. Fuck no. No, you're going to I'm going to do it with you and I'm going to have summoned you back here every night to do the show, Dad. That's just how it's going to be. Yeah, that's uh, that's how we roll. You know, there's never been like a uh, a reversed Bates Motel or uh, reversed uh, Psycho where you're or the not necessarily the, the whole movie, but just the Norman Bates character where it's he's holding the mother. What about like a, a crazy daughter that has the dad uh, doing that sort of thing? And it's a little well, bit. Well, obviously that has started in your family. Yeah, that's true. The idea. I uh, uh, based on a true story, I guess. <laughs> Just a little more time, Daddy. Just a little more time, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Never really thought of it in that sort of. See, to me, I'm just like, that's real fun. It's a great idea, Harper. And the rest of the world are like, that's really fucking weird. Ah, <laughs> uh, gotta take a little uh, breath of fresh air outside my bubble every now and then to go. Oh, that is kind of fucked up. Uh, if you like the show, keep us <laughs> that's on. What the- you got me <laughs> exactly. Become an extra podcast person in EPP at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, ebook, audiobook, and more, and help keep us on the air. Again, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Carol and all of us at Real Ghost Stories Online, I'm Tony Brisky. Thanks for listening.